Now, when I say North Korea, what do you think of? Glum regimentation, dictatorial tantrums, thermonuclear meltdowns. But the country's supreme leader, Kim Jong-un, is now trying something radically different. Here's a hint. Kim spent his formative years not on a collective farm or a labor camp, but apparently at a very posh Swiss boarding school. He developed a penchant for après ski and all the stuff that comes before it. So the North Korean regime invited Swiss journalist Mark Wolfensberger to check out their latest version of the socialist paradise. In the first of our series, North Korea Uncovered, our correspondent Jonathan Miller has this exclusive report. In a military labor camp on top of a mountain, the shock brigades of the People's Army have been flat out, round the clock, for nine months, carrying out the orders of Marshal Kim Jong-un, whose great name they praise. <laughs> The marshal made this project a top national priority. Late last summer, Kim Jong-un decreed that the happy, grateful proletariat of his not very democratic People's Republic would learn to ski in their own world-class resort, boasting 70 miles of runs, as well as chalets, hotels and a heliport. The propaganda girls have driven to the top of Taiwan Peak with some tonic for the troops. The 24 million inmates of this dirt-poor Stalinist dictatorship know a thing or two about sacrifice. Their country's crippled by food shortages, more than a quarter of their children stunted by malnutrition. 0.02% of the population skis. But Marshal Kim predicts that North Korea will soon be in the grip of ski fever. He came to offer field guidance at his Masik Pass resort in May. But this brainwave seriously off piste even for this eccentric autocrat. Kim Jong-un's man on the mountain gets this whole vision thing, it seems. The mountain must come to the marshal, he says, whatever the cost. Today's the deadline, though, and God help those workers. It looks like they've missed it. But there's a bigger problem, bigger even than the economics here not making sense, or the fact that it gets just three months of snow every year. It's the sanctions. North Korea might be able to build nuclear bombs, but not ski lifts, it seems. And because of the sanctions, it's unable to buy the chairlifts or snow cannons and blowers from the big European suppliers. The Swiss pulled out in July. Kim 
The regime branded it serious human rights abuse and, unable to accept this defeat, Lieutenant Colonel Pack ordered two 40-year-old ski lifts moved from another location 200 miles away and brought here. Trouble is, the old lifts reached just over halfway to the top, putting two-thirds of the newly cut ski runs out of commission. They're still six weeks short of first snowfall up here, plenty of time to finish the two vast resort hotels and the helipad before North Korea's proletarians rise up, lose their chains and go skiing. For Marshall Kim's ski resort fantasy wasn't dreamt up just for some new bourgeoisie. As with other fun days out in the DPRK, it's designed to reward productivity, inflame pride in the party, and to show a hostile, uninformed world that labor camps and famines aren't what their country's about. North Korea is a really fun place to be. At the brand new Italian built Pyongyang ice rink, where the slogan reads, Our country is the best, Marshall Kim, a leading ice expert, took a big brotherly hands on role. Last year, in an act of dystopian synchronicity, Marshall Kim opened Pyongyang's Dolphinarium as typhoon floods swamped badly built North Korean towns, killing hundreds. The highly trained dolphins and mermaids swim in seawater piped in from the coast 30 miles away. Perhaps the great marshal can just spot a great metaphor. If you give dolphins food, they will love you and do just what you want. Socialist luxury is young Marshall Kim's opiate for his hungry people, like this Pyongyang pizza parlor, half state-owned, half private, where the pizzas come out half-baked. They cost less than a fiver, but most people earn less than one pound a day. Some are simply more equal than others, and cans of Coke, flashy shoes, mobile phones, dolphinariums, ski resorts are held up as beacons of cultural and economic advancement. There's a beautiful beach in the east where, if you can afford it, you can kick back and contemplate Marshall Kim's weird brand of champagne Stalinism. But no one much can afford to come here, so they don't. I hope you've booked your holiday early, John. Oh, yes. Yes. Amazing pictures. Jonathan Miller reporting there. And you can see more of our series North Korea Uncovered next week on Channel 4 News.